Bible study this Wednesday. There is Bible study this Wednesday. And we'll be starting the book of Daniel. So if any of you have been not coming so far to Bible studies, but you'd like to understand a little bit more about these prophecies in the Bible and what do all the numbers mean, that type of thing. Daniel and Revelation are the two books that hold most of that. And that's why we're doing Daniel first, because it leads right into Revelation. They overlap somewhat, but that's what we'll be doing for the next few months is working on Daniel and Revelation. So you're welcome to come on Wednesday night, 630. Um, looks like most of our Sunday Bible study group is here today. I'll let you decide when we're downstairs later if you want to have class or not. I'm all set to, and then I got thinking... Maybe people are too tired to pay attention today, so I'll let you all decide if you want to have class or not after coffee time. Uh, are there any other announcements? Okay, I do have one for you that came through this week. Pastor Jim Seifert passed away on December 26th. Uh, I understand that he had retired quite some time ago. Um, they, the message here said that he probably had retired from here like 30 years ago, but had been one of your pastors. So if any of you remember him and you would like to go to the service, it will be at St. Mark's Lutheran in Portland on Saturday, January 28th at 10 and then at 2 o'clock on that same Saturday, the 28th of January, they'll be doing the internment in our cemetery here. So see me at coffee time if you need to hear that one more time. Anything else? Yes? I actually thought of something. Uh, the back door on the church, I put a fix on it, it works, but I want to just tell everybody that has a key and wants to use it now. It works really well. You put your key in the door and then do a little press and push on the door or something. That takes the dead bolt away from the starter plate and it'll open easier. Then you turn your key, just a little press, lean out of your shoulder, whatever. It makes it simple. Last Sunday, we uh, had to have somebody break into the church, a tired police officer who will remain nameless, in order for us to get in and have the church service. Uh, so Al worked on it this week. It's all lubricated. The lock's working good, but it will work better yet if you lean up against the door while you're trying to get it open. Okay. And there are extra keys in the office. Oh, yes, yeah, so we have a few extra keys, too, if somebody needed one for some reason. Well, <laughs> so, there might be three people here that don't have a key to the church right now. <laughs> okay, if there's no other business of the day, we'll get down to the important part of the day, and that is praising our Lord. If you please stand as you are able in our green book, number 45. <laughs>
open our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have done by another. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God, in whose mercy has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sins. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Grant that we 
reading is from Isaiah chapter 63 verse 7 through 14. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord has granted us, and the great goodness to the house of Israel that he has granted them according to his compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted. And the angel of the presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. Therefore he turned to be their enemy and himself fought against them. Then he remembered the days of old, of Moses and his people. Where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherds of his flock? Where is he who put in the midst of them his Holy Spirit, who caused his glorious arm to go out at the right hand of Moses, who divided the waters before them to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths? Like a horse in the desert, they did not stumble. Like livestock that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So you led your people to make for yourself a glorious name. Psalm 111. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth. He sent redemption to his people. He commanded his covenant forever, holy and awesome in his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who have it for me have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. The second reading, Galatians chapter 4, 4 through 7. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Please stand if you are able. The Gospel of Matthew, the second chapter, beginning at verse 13. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. 
Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and all in that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had ascertained from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping and loud <coughs> lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled, that he would be called a Nazarene. The word of the Lord. Please be seated. My friend, I got a question for you. Did you have any presents at your house for Christmas? Yeah? You had presents maybe with your name on them? Good, I'm glad. Were they just laying out there or were they wrapped up? They are wrapped up, okay. Were they wrapped in grocery bags or trash bags? No? What were they wrapped in? Wrapping paper, okay. If you had seven presents under that tree that had your name on them and six of them were wrapped in pretty Christmas paper and big bows and ribbons and all this and there was one that was just in a grocery bag with the fold, the top folded down. Which one would you go for first? Which one? The beautiful one? Yeah, I think we all would, wouldn't we? We kind of look around and the one that looks the prettiest, we open that one first. Yeah. We kind of do that with people too, don't we? That if there's a group of people and there's somebody who's really sharp, they got the latest clothes on and everything, you know, the, the best, most modern haircut, everything's in place and they have really smooth manners and they know just what to say so that everybody, oh, that's so funny. We would probably go to that person more than somebody who's just sitting in the corner like a bump on a log and a sour scowl on their face. We like to go toward things that are pretty, right? Yeah, we're more likely to go to a flower garden than to a junkyard, right? Yeah? Well, if you get to a junkyard, you can make like a big robot. I no more than said that, and I thought about how you boys love to take nothing and make something cool out of it. Maybe we'll say to a, a pit where they had been digging out rock and sand and stuff that they could use, and now there's just a yucky hole or a pretty park. Maybe boys would go to the yucky hole. <laughs> That's the backyard. <laughs> My point is, when Jesus came, the wise men figured it out from things that had been written from a long time before, and they figured out that king was being born, and they went straight to the palace to look for the new king. But he didn't go to the palace. Where was Jesus born? He was in Bethlehem, in a barn, huh? He couldn't even find an empty, his parents couldn't find an empty room to stay in. Oh, I don't think it was too stinky. I'll bet you they took good care of their animals and they had fresh straw to sleep on. Because we heard they found something there to be able to make a nice little bed for Jesus. But he was the king of everything. And yet he was born in really poor, plain wrappings. There was nothing fancy about the place where he was. And even today, 
we will have people who claim to be the next savior and they will come in on a tv stage with big flashing lights and a fancy band and they'll tell you how if you send them enough money they're going to promise you everything's going to be great in your life and you'll be rich and happy and all this and jesus doesn't do any of that jesus just whispers in your ear follow me follow me and i'll give you the best life forever but we have to remember to not get distracted by all that fancy stuff and instead listen for Jesus when he whispers to us. And I always remember Kevin said that the dad actually got something good. Sometimes it can be, especially if it's a great big box and they didn't want to put that much wrapping paper on. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear Jesus, you never force us into anything <clears throat> You never promise us anything for this world, <clears throat> but you promise us the best and the next world forever. Help us to not be distracted by all the noise and lights and pretty things in this world, but to always listen for your gentle voice of follow me. Amen. <clears throat> Before I start, I just happened to think that I probably should have put this into the announcements, but if you're somebody who might consider taking up the challenge I've been giving the last couple of Januaries, that is to start now and read the Bible through in one year, it's the first, so it's not too late to start, it's the perfect day. And all you need to do is spend half an hour a day and you can make it through the whole Bible this year. Oh, something to think about. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Today I am preaching on our Galatians text. <clears throat> I'm sure you heard the phrase, timing is everything. And there's a lot of truth in that statement. The difference between a good joke and a bad joke is all in a person's sense of timing. The wrong timing and the joke drops like a rock. If you're going to ask for a raise, you better understand timing. Because one does not approach the boss for a raise the same day that the assembly line breaks down or he receives notice that the IRS is auditing his account books. Timing. Do not ask your wife to run some of your errands. When the baby is crying, your son just wrote a nasty word on the wall with a permanent Sharpie and the microwave caught on fire. <laughs> Timing. It's the difference between the perfectly toasted golden brown marshmallow and a lump of charcoal ash. Timing in the stock markets, the difference between a Wall Street mogul and the man who just lost his whole retirement in a volatile market. Timing was crucial to the nativity story as well. It involved earthly empires and heavenly phenomena. <laughs> Today's New Testament reading from the book of Galatians starts off with, but when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son. So this morning, I would like to take a look at what went into the fullness of time coming for the arrival of the infant Jesus. If you say that something will happen in the fullness of time, you mean that it will happen eventually after a long series of events. Galatians 3 and 4 show us that God laid a foundation <coughs> through the Jewish law that would prepare for the coming of a Messiah. In Galatians 3, chapter, excuse me, verses 23 and 24, before this faith came, we were held prisoners by the law, locked up until faith should be revealed. So the law was put in charge to lead us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. 
People were prisoners of the law because they could not keep the law. When you read the Old Testament, you'll see that mankind tried everything possible to keep the law or to evade the law. However, all efforts led to condemnation. Not one person was able to keep the law. Christ Jesus came to fulfill the law for us. No longer do we live under the law. We now live under the grace of God. Throughout the Old Testament, we find a multitude of false gods. Greek and Roman culture offered a plethora of gods. But over time, people were losing interest in these small g gods that demanded blood sacrifices but did not seem to offer much in return. These blood sacrifices had to be offered repeatedly. They were never quite good enough. And the people were running out of options. And then comes the son of the true God. Only the gospel of Christ offers a God who gives his blood sacrifice on behalf of his worshipers. Among the more cultured folks, Greek and philosophy, excuse me, Greek philosophy and science had been tried only to leave those folks feeling more spiritually empty. Romans 8:28 tells us. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. In the, in the Nativity story, we see God even use the corrupt Roman Empire to serve his purpose. Since sin entered the world, the Jews had waited for the Messiah to come. And now there was great anticipation and desperation for the Messiah to come and overthrow the Roman rule. While the Jews yearned to be free of Roman tyranny, Rome had unified much of the known world through its government. Because the occupied territories were ruled with an iron fist in fear, the people also lived in relative peace. The Pax Romana, Roman peace, covered much of Europe, the Middle East, and Southwestern Asia. Highway <coughs> bandits, rabble rousers, and rebels were quickly suppressed. The Roman government had built an impressive network of roads in order to move troops swiftly and to carry messages quickly from Rome to distant outposts. When I traveled in Europe, I walked and drove on ancient roads from the Roman times, from Spain into Scotland, built with the paving stones that the Romans used over 2,000 years ago. Now, since it was safer and easier to travel, that meant the disciples of Christ could travel far and wide to spread the gospel message. The Roman army recruited soldiers from among the provinces that they occupied, and these men were moved around and introduced to the Roman culture and new ideas, such as the gospel. They had not reached the outlying provinces yet, but when they went home, they took the new thoughts and beliefs with them. In fact, the earliest introduction of the gospel to Britain was the result of the efforts of Christian soldiers stationed there. At the same time that Rome conquered militarily, Greece conquered culturally. A common man's form of the Greek language was now spoken throughout the Roman Empire. It was the commercial language for trading. And having a common language made it possible to communicate the gospel to many different people and nations. The disciples turned evangelists could go to new areas knowing that there would be someone with whom they could communicate. The timing of Christ's arrival fulfilled a specific prophecy in Daniel 9. It's a complicated calculation of <laughs> 77s 
that mathematically end at the time of the crucifixion of Jesus. A century ago in his book, The Coming Prince, Sir Robert Anderson gave detailed, excuse me, detailed calculations of this prophecy that ended on the very day of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem five days before his death, written centuries before. When Jesus was quite young, Joseph received a warning from God in a dream that he needed to flee Judea quickly as King Herod was desperate to kill this baby. Jesus, Joseph took his family to Egypt where they lived for a few years. Now how could Joseph, a poor peasant, have found the money needed for that trip except that God sent the Magi with gold and expensive frankincense and myrrh. God sponsored the trip. Timing is important in our spiritual lives as well. Jesus emphasized that the time to become a believer is now. If we put it off until we've done some earthly endeavors, good or evil, we could easily find that we have run out of time. This also goes for making peace, settling conflicts, offering apologies, and mending broken relationships. The timing is now. In our Galatians text, Paul lists six blessings that flow to us because Christ came. We are redeemed from living under the law, verse 5a. We are free from a law we could not keep. We are adopted into God's family, verse 5b. And this gives us the full rights as sons and daughters of God. The Holy Spirit now lives within us, verse 6a. So we have an advocate and a counselor at our disposal to guide us on the right path. We call God Father, verse 6b. Not just father, but daddy. We are on familiar, familial terms with he who created all that is. He who keeps the earth rotating on its axis. He who has the power to zap everything that is into oblivion at his will says, call me daddy. We are now God's children, verse 7 8. We are not slaves to do his bidding. Rather, we should want to serve God any way we can because of what he has done for us and his perfect love for us. <clears throat> Finally, we are spiritual heirs of God, verse 17. We are heirs along with Jesus. We are exalted saints. The timing of Christ's incarnation was such that people at the time were prepared for his coming. The people of every century since then have had more than sufficient evidence that Jesus was the promised Messiah through the fulfillment of the scriptures that prophesy his coming in great detail. There are over 300 prophecies about Jesus in the Old Testament. There are 11 Old Testament prophecies specifically about Jesus' death and birth. Now for some, there will never be enough proof to believe. But the wise do not need proof. The evidence is simply confirmation of what they already knew. Christ Jesus is the Son of God. Christ Jesus is the Messiah.
words of the Apostles' Creed found on page 85. And we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, we rejoice in knowing that you do not focus on our helplessness or sinfulness. Rather, you call us a crown of beauty in your hand, a royal diadem. We praise you, Lord God, like the psalmist of old. You have made all the earth to sing your praises, and in your image you have formed us. Lord God, in the fullness of time, you sent Jesus to us, born of a woman, that we might be your adopted children. Hear us as we acknowledge you as Abba, Father. Lord God, Simeon found peace when he looked upon Jesus, knowing that he was the promised Messiah. Give us Simeon's faith, his peace, and courage to proclaim it aloud. When your prophet Anna saw in Jesus the very redemption of the world, she cried out with joy, proclaiming him. It may we do the same. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, today we pray for this new year. We pray for peace among peoples and peace among nations. We pray for an end to dictatorships. We pray for the restoration of the sanctity of life at all ages. We pray for an end to hoarding by the rich and hunger for the poor. We pray for a restoration of families, that children would be loved by their parents, that they would be valued, that old people would be valued by the young. We pray for a healing of marriages and strained family relationships. Lord, this year has so much potential, but we always turn the wrong way. We pray for your guidance that peace could be restored. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, when we come forward here shortly, we will be bringing our offerings to you. And we offer them with joy and thanksgiving, knowing that they first came from you, that they are signs of your gracious love. So we ask that you accept them and that you bless them and multiply them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the respiratory issues that are going around. First, that people would be spared, and then for those who do come down with one or two of them, that they would be restored quickly. We remember those who are still dealing with the long-held symptoms from COVID. We pray for those who have permanent damage because of it. Lord, you bear the favor of God and you have the powers to heal beyond our understanding. So hear us lay our loved ones before you. We name Miriam, Mike, Jake, Scott, Mary Jo, Stacy, London, Brandon, Brenda, Mary Lou, 
Brandon and Kelly, Jack, Jim, Al, Donna, Jack, Rayona, Brita, June, Lorraine, Tom, Jeanette, Vanna, Al, Mary. We pray for peace and confidence in you for Bobby. We thank you for relieving her suffering. And now we pray for comfort for family and friends. And we now name aloud or in our hearts those who need your healing who have not been named yet. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy. Lord, I lift up my pastor friend who is under serious persecution. I pray that you would help him find a new call and that you would give the family strength to deal with what they are facing. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we also come before you now to thank you for the many blessings that you have been you have bestowed upon us and most of all lord i start off with thanking you that we could celebrate our christmas in peace thank you dear lord for bringing jack home for christmas and please take him home safely Lord, thank you for the awareness of your presence when I've been ache, and when doors shut and windows open, that we know you're involved. Thank you, Lord. Dear Father, I thank you for the being with us during our Christmas celebration. And it was the best Christmas. Thank you, Lord, for a supportive community and the love they show me. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> You have opened the eyes of faith to a new and radiant vision of your glory, that beholding the God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs>
their last meal together. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the wine, and he blessed it, and he gave it to all those present, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink in remembrance of me. And we pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is set, the feast is prepared. It's time to enjoy the Lord's gift.
you stand as you are able? our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Your closing hymn is number 55. Amen.